Hey guys, here again with another Sharagorov knife and video. This one is on the Russian Hokkaido, collaboration with Sergei Sharagorov and John Parker. Now this knife was released in October 2018. Uh, there was a run of 200 of them done. And coincidentally, I actually did a video on this. So this was actually my first uh, knife rambles video. Um, a little bit less experience back then on what to actually talk about so it kind of came out all at once so i thought it'd be a good time to kind of revisit that and take a look at the knife you know with a little bit more experience reviewing other shirogorov knives so let's dive right into it uh, first thing i want to take a look at is the size now we have a couple knives to compare it to we have an f95 we have a neon here and you can see, while you know, a lot of people think that this knife is very big, it's actually not quite that big. It's just a little bit bigger than the F95. I think uh, that discrepancy that people are experiencing is due to the height of the handle. The, the handle is much taller, the blade is much taller as well. And you get that impression that the, the knife is a beefy knife, which it is, but size-wise, it's not really all too out there. Now, because the knife is similar to an F95, um, you can expect that the cutting edge was pretty much the same as well at around four inches of usable cutting edge. Um, overall, the knife is around um, just a little bit over eight and three fourths of an inch, eight and three fourths inches as well. So again, in that size, if you're used to carrying an F95, um, this should really have no problem being in your pocket. Now let's take a look at the weight. The weight on this knife, however, I think is a different story. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a normal F95 to compare, but if you take a look at this F7, an F7, you know, this one is skeletonized, but it has a thicker blade, so I, I would approximate them to be the same as a normal production one. It's around 138.8, so 139 grams. This knife, however, is 169.8, so 170 grams. Now, again, that goes... Uh, the reason for that uh, is, you know, due in large part to the larger blade and handles, but also the use of bronze on the uh, hardware here that we'll talk about. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the features of the knife. Let's start with the blade. This blade is Vanax 37 steel. Um, the steel uh, used to be used in production shirogrovs. Uh, they've since phased out the steel. So now these collaborations and limited edition knives are really the only way to get a hold of the steel. A lot of people uh, now are actually starting to kind of discover the merits of the steel, perhaps maybe due to the, the newfound rarity. Um, Van X37, again, is a pretty much a nitrogen version of Almax by Bowler. Uh, so extremely corrosion resistant, um, nearly corrosion proof. Um, taking a look at the actual configuration of the blade, you can see it's very reminiscent of Barker's design, original design. Uh, it has that nice flowing uh, curved swedge along with the Tonto grind. The blade finish is similar to other custom division knives with a very fine stone wash finish that uh, reflects light very well. The grind, as you expect from a Shirogorov, is quite thin, and I think the, the massive size of the bevel really dwarfs that um, really thin secondary bevel. That really makes that edge look amazing when it catches the light. Now, on both sides of the blade, you can see the logos of the makers. You have a uh, Shirogorov logo here, and Barker's logo here. Now, if you notice, these logos aren't just laser engraved. Um, they are laser engraved, but they're done with a very, very strong, deep engraving that uh, gives some depth and, you know, 3D effect to those logos. Very well done. Uh, personally, I'd like to see this used more. I think it'd be really great if this was just a standard logo uh, on production knives as well. But uh, again, really cool thing to see. Taking a look at the flipper tab. You can see that the flipper tab is uh, not a normal Shirogorov design. Um, with normal Shirogorovs, you usually see that jimping, uh, you know, on the front face. This one has it on the top. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit more when we kind of discuss the action and uh, the mechanics of the knife as a whole. Moving on to the handle, you can see that this handle is bronze anodized titanium 
We have bronze pivot collars, that keyed custom division type pivot that has a screw on the other side. And we have a very clean handle design with no rear screw here. We also have a handle that has, you know, large scalloping here on the top and the bottom and a middle section with a very fine progressive wave type milling. As you see, you can see here, it starts pretty coarse, tapers off and is very, very fine with that wave pattern and then opens up towards the pommel area here. Really great work on this machining and I love seeing uh, these unique milling patterns that Sergei likes to put on his uh, knives. You know, all of them are pretty much different in their own special way. And you can tell that a lot of thought was put into uh, the actual design of that milling pattern. Um, going on to the backspacer, you can see that this backspacer is bronze that has had a patina applied to it. Um, you can also see a very wide type of jipping on the front and the back of the knife. Um, this jimping uh, actually has a fair amount of grip, especially on the back spacer here. Um, I've complained a lot about um, custom visions with the wide style jimping that they really, you know, look great but don't function very well. And um, I'm happy to to see that the this back spacer actually has a has a great deal of jimping. Um, you back here, you have a large lanyard loop, which is uh, much larger than you would see. Uh, on, you know, even an F95 style knife, so, uh, or, or a Hati with a backspacer. So really great addition here, it kind of sticks out as well, makes it easy to put the paracord in. Um, right here we have a custom division sc blind screw. Um, this screw is similar to the tight ones found on the Neon and the Quantum. Um, it's inverted, so it's really not going to work with anything, which is kind of annoying if you want to disassemble the knife. Um, I have word that the workshop is working on getting a pen bit for this to disassemble it, but uh, unsure on the status of that. Um, next, let's take a look at this clip here. And I think the clip is one of the defining features of the knife, especially when you contrast it with the original Barker design. Um, again, I, I think Barker has very iconic designs. His brand design is, is very much, uh, you know, on point. You can, pretty much everyone can recognize a Barker design. But this clip is really just something else. Uh, and I think Sergei did a really great job um, creating a clip that flows with pretty much every aspect of the knife. You know, you have an, the clip flowing with the, the handles. Um, the lines with the handle while at the same time being, you know, contoured to blend in with the rear area of the knife. Um, let's just take a couple seconds here to kind of appreciate that milling. As you can see here, we have a secondary bump here on the clip for retention and also a very wide contact patch, which will make sure that the knife doesn't inadvertently fall out of your pocket. Taking a look at the lock bar, uh, you can see this lock bar has a raised hump here. Um, presumably this is to give enough uh, meat for the threads on the lock bar insert to kind of take hold there. You can see that uh, pivot screw is kind of poking off so you can kind of see uh, the machining, just how well finished that lock bar insert screw is. And on the bottom, you also see that jimping now that jimping here, as you can see, matches up with the blade when it's closed. Uh, the jimping on the blade and the jimping on the bottom of the handle here. If you take a look, the jimping now matches with the top of the handle when the blade is deployed. Really cool thing to see, uh, you know, those two design elements kind of playing very well with each other uh, in the open and closed position. Uh, I think it's just a really nice design touch and shows how much thought was put into this design. When you take a look at the uh, kind of internals of the knife, you can see there's very heavy skeletonization here, which you would expect from a Shirogorov knife, and I think is uh, you know doubly important on a knife of this size. Um, you can see that the the milling pockets are you know done at this very extreme angle, which is really cool. Now taking a look at the inside of the back spacer, you can see that there is a very large groove here. Now. You know, Shirogorov has been doing this with a lot of knives, and this is one of the first knives to, to really start that trend. But again, it's just to really showcase those tolerances and, you know, have that blade centering be shown on a knife that, uh, you know, has a very long slender blade profile when viewed from the top. Um, those wedges really kind of give that effect. So 
overall, really nice uh, collaboration. I think that there was, uh, you know, really great design synergy. You have a lot of aspects that are, you know, wholly Sergey's, but the design as a whole, uh, you can definitely see the influence and, you know, from the original Barker design. Um, overall, for the actual mechanics of the knife, um, the, the knife flips very well if you know how to use it. Um, I think that's pretty much due in part to this flipper tab. Um, if you take a look at the flipper tab compared to an F95 or pretty much any of other Sergei's designs, you can see kind of uh, a triangle shaped flipper tab where you have like a 45 degree angle on the uh, where the jimping is. Um, with this knife and actually the RFT, the Brad Southern collaboration, we have a flipper tab that's kind of chopped off at the top here where that jimping is. And I think that really promotes kind of a, um, how would you call it? Uh, push button flipping technique. But I really think that this knife would have benefited if it had a normal angle on the flipper tab to get, kind of give that light switch technique. When I flip the knife, I really have to go in for a light switch but I feel like that tab is missing and it's not allowing me to kind of get that, that that leverage, that preload on the flipper tab to flip it, you know, amazingly. So, you know, it flips with that light switch technique, but I feel like it could just be so much more. Um, otherwise though, you know, the knife flips very smoothly. It flips very loudly and has a very good lockup, uh, pretty much due in part to that um, hefty blade. Um, the action, uh, the drop shot action, again, is also very well. Uh, it drops shot very well, you know, again, to that heavy blade. So that heavy blade is really working for it uh, in terms of that deployment and also that closing as well. Um, otherwise, uh, I, I think a great job on both designers. And uh, really, if you're a fan of Barker's designs and you kind of want something that you know pays homage to that, but again, it's just completely different in terms of uh, you know these really cool aesthetic features and uh, that action as well. Then definitely uh, give this knife a shot. Um, you know, it's been on the market for some time. Uh, they're still widely available. You know, with two hundred knives out there, they're not too hard to find, and I think the prices are pretty reasonable uh, on the secondary as well. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, this review. And I hope it's a good update to those of you who have seen uh, my original review on the Hokkaido. And I uh, hope to see you next time.